our guest, Chris Melly. Good afternoon, Phil. How are you? And good afternoon, Chris. And thank you for joining us. Afternoon, Phil and Alison. Looking forward to this match. And what a match we have in store. Two of Europe's powerhouses. Yes, it's uh, Jason's first match in this arena, Neil's second match. How do you think that's going to play out, Chris? Well, obviously, the break's going to play a big part in this, this match. Uh, Niels has already been out there, so he's got a slight advantage. We know how the table plays, but knowing Jason as I do, he's one of them people who he, uh, he doesn't worry about that. He just wants to focus on his own performance, and if he plays to his ability, he's going to take some stopping. It's one of those contests that... You wouldn't fancy picking a winner over any distance if it was first to 50 or first to 100, but first to seven, I think it really is a toss of the coin. Yeah, it certainly is. I was saying to a few of the players this week that I fancy one of them to uh, actually run the match. And I do think one of them's going to go close to doing that. Well, I would certainly love to see that because this is a winner break format race to seven Rack number one and we've got eagle break. eye breaking yeah, we're certainly delighted with that break Nicely on the one ball. That's all you can ask for in this situation. Try to make a ball on the break and have a clear shot. And there we see Jason made two balls on the break. Nicely played there, played that with a lot of top right hand spin to bring the cue ball down the right hand side of the table. Just landed a little bit straight on this two, so he wants to get somewhere near straight on the three ball. I heard that uh, the other night you guys went out and played snooker, is that right? I don't want to speak about that, Alison. Well, the point being is that we're playing on tight pockets here, four inch pockets. So was that a little bit of a warm-up for the tournament? Yeah, that was the main reason that we went out to play a little bit of snooker. We used our nine-ball cues, which we don't normally do. So it was slightly different, but it was just a case of getting used to the tighter pockets. And the reason you don't want to talk about it, Chris, I believe, is that Jason actually uh, got the W. Yeah, he beat me on the black. For those of you who don't know, Jason's actually a very talented snooker player as well. I actually saw him make a, a 145 break in New York, playing snooker with his nine ball cue. Wow. On a full size table? Yeah. Attention, please. It's arguable that's the highest ever break made on American soil. Well, he certainly doesn't miss much, that's for sure. Yeah, supremely talented player and ultra confident. Doesn't miss much, but this is a little tester for him, first frame. Well, what? An absolutely picture-perfect start. The, the lag one, and then... Off the break, leaving himself a nice easy opener after potting two balls on the break and then making the light work of the rest of it. Jason Shaw leads Niels Fine 1-0. And there's not a lot you can do to stop that. There's not a lot you can do to stop Jason Shaw when he's in full flow. World ranking number four, 32 years of age now, in his prime as a pool player. He's come close to winning this title, as he told us in his interview 
and in 2017 he won one of the very big events in Whirlpool, the US Open. Yeah, not only that, Phil, he's won a lot of tournaments abroad. He won the International Open, he's won the Kuwait Open. Must go a couple numerous times. And Niels Fine, at the age of 44, is the oldest competitor in the field. But after Phil Mickelson's win in the golf last night, age clearly is no barrier to glory. Jason Shaw, when he's absolutely buzzing, he's a joy to behold. Rack number two. Current score is 1-0 in favour of Mr Shaw. Mr. Shaw, to break. Wow, another great break from Jason there with an open table. Maybe your prediction could come true, Chris. Well, I'm not going to say what I said to Jason when he was walking down the stairs for this match. But the way it's going, it could happen. What, what a break that is. I mean, you couldn't possibly ask for a better break than that. Three or four stun shots and everything's next to each other. He doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Do you ever have any discussions about how the table is breaking? You haven't been out there and played a match. Yeah, we certainly do. And uh, Jason was watching Joshua break and said that he's got the perfect break. I think a lot of the players are going to try and copy that. A little loose there on the three ball from Jason, but he's OK. If you do watch Jason play, you can clearly see that he's so laid back. Looks like he doesn't care. Yeah, like you said, he's an amazing talent, as are you. And uh, in this tournament, you had a very tough draw drawing Joshua and a great match. And either of you could win the event, so... Yeah, we're difficult. I had my chances and only myself to blame at the end. Well, this is just terrific stuff from Jason Shaw. Pool is a very tough game, but he's making it look easy right now. And he leads very quickly by two racks to zero. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, delighted to say he's, he's happy because Dennis Grape has beaten Albin Ocean 7-3. Dennis, you are happy, aren't you? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm delighted to have a, such a great win. Very, very good win. And the big cheer, I heard you at the end, come on! Because obviously uh, many people expected Albin to win, but that was a fantastic win for you. Yeah, I guess I was underdog in that match, but I played almost perfect. Like, you, you can't say Albin didn't have many chances, so uh, tough luck to him. Yeah, tough luck to him, but good for you. And in the next round, you've got Joshua Filler. That's a fantastic tie. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I tried to give my best game, and if I play the same way, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, how much are you looking forward to that match? It'll be a special match, because we've yeah. seen him at the World Cup. He was on good form. Yeah, I've had many matches with him. It will be a tough one, for sure. But sure, I wish you the very best. And congratulations this afternoon. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the toughest thing of the lot is when you're confined to your Back chair number three. and your opponent two to zero is just in, favor of Mr. in Shaw. prime form. That's Mr. the case Shaw. with Two Jason breaks. Shaw right now. Two racks and no one, no one on the planet could have played them any better. And another clear shot of that one ball. A 
It looks like we're having a little master class here and breaking. Well, if he keeps breaking the way he's breaking and landing on that one ball, Neil's fire won't get a shot because Jason's in top form at the moment and every single one of these players in this event can run the match. It's just about getting the opportunity. Chris, you were talking about running the match before it began. Now, if he does, that would be one of the great Q Sports commentary calls of all time. A really good pal of mine who Alison knows extremely well, Neil Folds. I remember I was in a box with him on one occasion and he called a 147 after one red and one black. I think this would be just as good as that, if not a little better. You've got a crystal ball. Maybe a new job. As long as it's not mine. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I would take your talent, Chris, on the pool table if you want to swap. Yeah, I've got no intention of uh, giving up just yet. I mean, what can you do, Alison? The guy's not had a shot and you can't blame him for anything apart from losing the lag. Well, it's, it's a very interesting thing because we were all talking, actually, previous to this yesterday afternoon. And Nels came down and we started talking about the winner break format and he's not a big fan of it. And now we know why. What do you think, Chris? I love it. Chris will expand on that after the break right now. Jason Shaw is loving the winner break rules and he's loving life because he leads 3-0 and it's just a potting festival. There's nothing better in sport than seeing a master of his trade in top form. 
That's the case with Jason Shaw right now. He is playing flawless pool. Neil Swyant lost the lag and since then he's been sitting down. So these two are playing for the right to take on Albania's Eklund Kachi in the quarterfinals. This is the top half of the draw, by the way. And the other match in this half, it's Justin Sayich against Alexander Kazakis to take on Skylar Woodward. Rack number four. Our current score is three to zero in favor of Mr. Shaw. Mr. Shaw, to break. Will the beat go on? Well, he's got a shot, Phil, but will he go for it? Is he thinking, can I run this match, or is he going to play a good safety? What would you do? I'd be going for it. I think he has to. be slightly easier, I think, if he was right-handed. Yeah, he can put the extension on the back of the queue. He's just got to be a little bit careful of the right side pocket. If he plays it playing ball, it's close to scratching, so may need to play this with a touch of spin. And it's interesting that he's not playing with his extension on the queue this match. The dream's over. What a shame. But he's got cover, I think, with the two. I think Niels will just be happy to be at the table. Yeah, it wasn't a million Benson, miles away. He was concentrating more on position than the pot. But can Niels jump this ball? Can he reach it? Well, if he can jump it, we know how great a jumper he is. Yeah, he's one of the best in the world with the jump cue. It looks like he's going to kick this rail first, touch a right and spin. Be looking to pot the one ball in the corner. Oh, that's nicely played. Considering it was his first shot up at the table. Yeah, what a shot to be faced with. A swerve shot on your first visit to the table. Oh, that was a nice, confident strike there using three rails, nicely played and back in position on the three ball he played a really good shot there he had to be careful of scratching the right centre pocket but couldn't have hit that any better could do with the cue ball roughly where it is now for the four just about okay Just going to apply a little bit of right hand English on this to get a good angle onto that purple five ball. Used all of the pocket there to hold the cue ball for a nice position to the five. And you can't see any problems in this rack. And it's worth recalling that in the first round he was 3-1 down to Jeffrey De Luna. Then reeled off six consecutive racks. So Fion not out of this by any means. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, Phil, but Jason's a different animal. <laughs> Yes, he most certainly is, but 
doesn't matter who it is if you're breaking off and running racks no one can stop you Ooh, I tell you what that nine ball wasn't the cleanest but he gets a rack on the board as Neil Spine and that means Jason Shaw's lead has been reduced to 3-1 it was all about the the one ball we thought he might break and run yet again it was a fiddly shot and it was a very delicate shot and he just undercut the one and that was it like to say quarter finalist Skylar Woodward joins me Skylar I know you've got a day off but you've got got to help me out here a bit of analysis because this is a really intriguing game uh yeah for sure looks like uh, this is going to be a great match right here too yeah I mean many were thinking the way Jason started it could be a whitewash but that was a lovely shot from Niels there on the one uh yeah for sure you know he made a he made a few good shots right there to get out that rack uh, which is huge you know Jason missing that ball chance to go up four nothing and and Neil's to win that game is, is really big. When Jason plays like this, just the quick play, the confidence, there's not many better around the way when he was like this. Yeah, for sure. One of the best shot makers in the game. Um, mm. It's hard to leave him any shot. He, he makes every ball. Yeah. So this, this, there's Neil's there on the one. I mean, he was sitting down for so long. Then to get up and put a shot like that just shows his class too. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That was a, a tough shot, you know, and then... Uh, the two ball, the two ball was super hard too to cut the ball in with speed and spin and get on the three. So yeah. making the first two shots was was great. Brilliant, Skyler. Thanks so much. Looking forward to this. Rack number five. Our current score is three to one in favor of Mr. Shaw. It's fine. To break. He's a man on a mission. Neil's fine. A man in a hurry. When we were introducing the players, he was straight into the arena, waiting for the cue. There can't be fast enough to the table to get things underway again. Yeah, he's been a bit unfortunate there. Hit the brake good and the cue ball got kicked a couple of times. See there, pointed the seven ball in the left hand corner pocket. Five in the left side. But unfortunately, no easy shot on the one ball. Running a little close to that pocket there, but he still managed to get some cover on that one ball. Played Chris, really there's no it. way he played that close to a pocket, surely. No, he uh, he didn't want to be that close, that's for sure. He was uh, dancing with danger there. He has got the snooker, so uh, that's what he played, but... Extension, please. Not a tough ball to hit for Jason, but tough to get safe. Alison, the last safety from Niels, when you do that kind of thing and take the cue ball so close to a pocket, the heart must flutter. Definitely, because he knows that you can't let Jason back to the table the way he's playing. And you don't want to give any advantage to your opponent with the, the winner break format. Yeah, and Jason played a real good shot there. Slightly unfortunate that he's left the one, because coming out of the snook, he had to draw the cue ball into the cushion off the top cushion you can see the side spin there on the one just caught the one a little bit thick extension please that was really confidently hit there using that nine ball to slow the cue ball down and he has a little bit of angle to play with some left spin off the rail to get up for the three ball. Perfectly onto the three ball. Just going to play this with a touch of top right hand spin. Needs to land low on the pink four. Doesn't want to be high. just about okay if it had landed a touch higher he would have had to come around the back of the eight ball
And from Jason looking like he was going to run away with this match. We've got a battle on our hands. I love the way uh, Neil stalks around the table. The Terminator. He's a renowned fighter and he's now within one rack. Jason Shaw's lead, it's diminished to just 3-2. Neil Spine's got quite a history in this Dapper Bet World Pool Masters. He's won it twice in 2013 in Barnsley at the Metrodome. That was his first success and here in Gibraltar, not at this stadium but at the Victoria Stadium on the other side of the peninsula. He was also successful three years back and he's beaten some really good players to get his name on this trophy in 2018. Raj Hundal, Dennis Ocolio, Carl Boys and in the final Shane Van Boning. In 2013 it was Boys again in the last 16. Mika Immonen, Alex Pagulayan and then Darren Appleton in the final. Is he going to complete quite a hat-trick? Only one player in the history of this tournament has lifted this trophy on more than two occasions, and that's the great Ralph Suke, a six-time winner. And I'm hearing, and I'm really delighted about this, that we get to see Ralph play in the World Nine Ball Championship at Milton Back Keynes six. next Back month. Looking forward to seeing that. He's one of the true greats of the game, is Ralph. Once again, a little unfortunate on the break. Made a ball, but no shot on the one. He's looking if he can get on the left side of the the one ball, see if he can put the cue ball behind the six ball here, I think, Chris. Yeah, that would be the, the best option. The only problem is he's not creating a lot of distance between the cue ball and the one ball. Doesn't want it to go in. Good shot there from Niels and Jason, his face with the Horrible situation here. Yeah, some snookers are better than others. Extension. Extension, please. That was a really nice hit by Jason there. But he has left Neil as an opportunity. That was a tricky little speed he played that, at Chris. Yeah, he needed to hit it a lot harder to get the the distance between the cue That's ball amazing. and the one ball. And Neil's may take the opportunity here to cut the one in and try and cannon the seven ball next to the four. That in t uh, sorry, next to the five, and that internal give him the opportunity to have a clear run out. And that is a terrible shot. That was the danger. He didn't want to hit the five ball, he needed to hit the seven. And if you're going to play that, you've got to play it inside. You clearly see here he's tried to hit the seven. Didn't quite get the spin that he wanted on that.
Well, they'll certainly take that, Alison. That yeah. is a nice result. Yeah, speed control was good there. It came out well. It's never easy to hit those one rails with control. Do you think he was trying to make that, Chris? Well, I think he was trying to hit either edge of the three ball and send send both balls in opposite directions to create distance, but he'll take that. Well, he threw his arm at that one, did Jason, and he's had a result. I don't think this three ball cuts in. He also jumped up off that shot. That was a, such a tough cut, though. Yeah, that would have been a tough shot on six-inch pockets, let alone four. Nicely played by Nils. Jason yeah. got a little fortunate there. Yeah, and there's not a great deal Jason can do here. I think the best option is to just flick off the three ball and leave the cue ball on the top rail. Well, he could see more of the three ball than I thought, and what a shot he's played there. Yeah, I thought the the cut that was available to Jason was a lot thinner than he actually pulled off. He's turned the tables there. Yeah, that was a brilliant shot there, Phil. It was a real tough situation he was faced with and couldn't have asked for a, a better outcome. That's a uh, really good safety shot. I learned that a long time ago from Johnny Archer you hit rail first and uh, the three boards you could see hit the right hand side and went back against the top rail there it's a really good safety shot yeah I wasn't sure he could play that shot he, he couldn't really get the distance from the three and the one, the cue ball, should I say, but he's left Niels a, a straight in three ball here and nothing's nothing's tied up. Except possibly the match if Niels runs out. He's just playing under the five here. There's a nice speed control shot there. Niels will be looking to pot this five ball and leave the cue ball either on the top rail or on the kitchen line. And that's perfect. The kitchen line. I like that one, Chris. Yeah, that's what they call it in America. We call it the bulk line in snooker, and but in America it's called the kitchen line. the mention of the kitchen line I think it's worth reiterating that in the first three racks here Jason Shaw threw the kitchen sink at Neil Swine but now look at this parity has been achieved the Dutchman is a real fighter and I'll tell you what I think we're in for a tremendous conclusion to this match between two pool giants
It's day three or four here in Southern Europe on the very tip of the continent. This is the Europa Point Sports Complex. The, the wide building there, just on the other side of that artificial rugby and football pitch, that's where we're housed for the Daffabet World Pool Masters. Take a walk out to the, the lighthouse in between sessions, get the, the cobwebs blown away and then come back indoors and enjoy world-class pool. So far this afternoon, the two winners we've seen, Maximilian Lechner, 7-5 over Miesko Fortunski and Dennis Graber, 7-3 over Albin Auschen. Rack number seven. We are currently all tied at three games apiece. Mr. Fine, to break. How interesting, isn't it? The break. Um, Neil's breaks haven't quite been working out for him so far, whereas Jason, when he's at the table, has been breaking and having open racks. Push out. So it's a little frustrating for Neil's. Yeah, Neil's hasn't had a clear opportunity at the one ball or the lowest number ball on the table after the break, where Jason has broke four times, and four times he's had a shot at the one ball. For a moment there as the balls were going around I thought he would have the two ball on but then the seven blocked the path Mr Shaw your option well it's not a bad push out you can obviously see the side of the two ball but what has Neil got in store if he gives it back? Can he bank it into the corner? He has got a good shot if he hits it slowly, but he's got to avoid the double kiss. That's very dangerous, isn't it? Slow pace. Yeah, he may play the two ball off the side rail onto the top rail, but he's got to avoid the double kiss with the cue ball coming back down. That's what he tried to do, and he's been a little bit unfortunate to catch the knuckle of the side pocket. And you would think he's going to be snookered when he comes back to the table. Yeah, you could see the look of disgust uh, catching that. Extension. Extension, please. He's got a few different options here. That's why he's taken his extension to really think this through. He could split the balls, he could send the two ball down table, he could try even a bank shot. He says cover. I mean, what's the option here, Chris? Yeah, I, I like playing the two to the side rail and the cue ball on the opposite side rail. There's a lot of blockers there. But he, he has got an opportunity to play the bank as a free shot and try and snook him behind the seven and three. Not sure he's got the snooker on the two ball. He might have just left the edge. Nicely played uh, by Nils there, but shouldn't be too difficult for Jason to hit. It's about controlling the cue ball and the two ball. You see we're going airborne. He's pretty handy with that jump cue, isn't he? Yeah, he's very, very good with the jump cue is Jason. As you can just see. <laughs> wow, that's a tremendous shot. I've watched him do so many shots like that. Well, I watched him do a similar shot to that in the International Open final a few years ago. And now he's faced with either a snooker or a combination. Mr. 
That's a clever shot there from Jason. Got the cue ball tight to the five. Stopping Niels from going off the top rail or the bottom rail. Can't really go off the side rail. This is a real tough shot that Niels is faced with here. Yeah, it's perfect pacing, but not, not an easy shot to execute to get that little bit of roll on Stand the cue ball. A couple of rotations. <coughs> this is this is horrible. The problem is bridging over the five ball. The harder he hits it, the more the cue ball is going to jump. If he does it, the top side of the three, he could pot the four. Well, Shaw laid the trap, and now he's got the chance. He yeah, was faced with a tough shot there, Phil. He had to jab the cue in the air and stop the three ball and the cue ball because it would have been rolling into the four and now you can't get the cue ball away from the top rail. Part of the contest so far, this well done. Yeah, it's very important that Jason wins this rack for his own confidence. And this is a little bit more trickier than he wanted. And we've seen a lot of this kind of pot overcut. Niels Fyand did it twice in his previous match. And Jason Shaw goes the opposite way, undercuts it. That was a massive, massive miss. Surprising as well from the eagle eye. Yeah, if you're going to miss that shot, you've got to miss it thin because it'll always go safe. You just seem to jump up a little bit for me there, Alison. Well, that just shows you the tension in this match at the moment. Not surprising. At 3-0, there was a hint that Jason Shaw might run out this match. Now he's not even leading. The eight ball could be a very, very costly miss. Neil Svayan goes in front at 4-3. He's such a good potter, Chris, like yourself. When he misses one, it always jars. It always comes as a, a shock to everyone concerned, and I'm sure it was a, a shock to, to Jason himself. We thought he'd force the chance there, and after the, the pink four, Maybe the gate was open, but then suddenly it was slammed. Far too experienced to, to dwell. But his game, while he's a very skilled all-round player, his game is based on that. Four to three. I think he left himself a little too close to the rail on the five, don't you? And that's where it all sort of starts to fall down. Oh, and Niels was very fortunate there. That cue ball was going straight into the side pocket and got kicked. He also switched sides. To break on that time. Got fed up of not having a shot on the other side. Yeah, 
once, once again left with no shot on the one ball choosing to play a push out from where push he's out. looking Option. And I think this is Nielsen's game plan. He's trying to beat Jason with the safety. What do you do here, Alison? I don't know. It's a real tricky one. I'll give it back to Niels and then see what he does, because that is... Uh it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think uh, I'm giving him it back. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that really stands out. I'm just sending, just getting the balls spread apart. You really, on a good safety shot, you've got to focus on making sure one ball is tied up. One of them. Sometimes people focus on both balls, and that's where it all goes wrong. So, let's see what Nils has up his sleeve. a danger there wasn't it controlling trying to control both has he left Jason that shot not quite sure he can make that one ball if he can he'll be going for it extension please no I don't think he can make this one Well, what a shot he's played there. I didn't think he could make that. Wait a minute, what's your age difference? Not that much. <laughs> well, he certainly made that look easy. Yeah, the camera angle is very deceiving. Yeah, the eight ball over the pocket made, made that a big pocket there. So he could focus more on leaving a nice angle on the pink four ball to get to the five ball. Yeah, he just needs to stay still on these shots, Alice, and he seems to be moving a little bit, sign of nerves. Yeah, you don't often see that from Jason, do you? Doesn't you don't really see his nerves, but body movement definitely shows that. Yeah, when I uh, when I missed a ball against Philly yesterday, I knew I'd moved on the shot, and I even said to Jason after the You're match, welcome. I said, "I know why I've missed." I said I, I, I felt myself move. That's a good lesson for everyone watching. There should be no movement. Keep your head still, body still. It's just the cue moving back and forth. Very pleasing from Jason Shaw. He was in danger of the match getting away from him, but some really good pots, and now he's back on level terms and feeling a whole lot better about his prospects. And that was the key ball. The one just about squeezed the cue ball past the seven. And from there on in, he is such a good manoeuvrer of the cue ball, such a good potter that you always suspected that he would tie up the scoreline now he's gained the advantage back and we know from past experience in this match that his break is very very dangerous Neil Spine knows that Jason Shaw broke and ran the first three racks if he breaks and runs the last three that's it yeah, and also, Phil, what's amazing is it's four apiece and Niels hasn't had one shot after the break. 
Break number nine. We are currently all tied at four games apiece. Mr. Shaw, you break. And now it's Jason who doesn't have a clean cut opportunity to pot the one ball. Seem to break, break them a little bit softer there, Phil. Yeah, because the, the first three racks were so spectacular. You think, well, why well, change a, a winning formula? And another poor shot there from Jason. He was jumped up off the queue once again. Don't you wish sometimes you could have a wingman out there telling you? Coach on the sidelines. Yeah, he's just struggling a bit at the moment. He's lost a, lost a bit of confidence. And once that happens, it becomes very difficult. And conversely, Chris... When he's full of confidence, it's lights out. Yeah, there's there's certainly not many players better to watch than Jason Shaw. Doesn't want to be bridging over the seven, and he is. This has just become a lot more difficult. Horrible queuing, not a full pocket. Narrow entrance past the pink four, and he's very dominant. Right eye, there you can see. So, even that's making it a little more difficult. It was just pocket weight that cajoled the red three ball into dropping. It looks like he's going to play the safety here, but I'd be tempted to try shoot the ball in the side as a free shot. It's a good shot, but it's very easy to hit the four ball. Yeah, and I think one thing to note for people watching also is he didn't put that four close to that end rail because then it becomes a really massive, easy target, doesn't it? Yeah, you want the object ball away from the from the rails so that your opponent Attention, can't please. kick the ball in easy. I've seen some of your wonderful kick shots on YouTube, Chris. Yeah, you always need a little bit of luck with them and I've had a few good coaches that have helped me to kick the ball. Foul. Legal contact. Well, that was a kick in the teeth because look at the balls here now. Touch clock, please. Yeah, and every frame that Niels has won, it's come from a safety. Yeah, Niels is a really great all round player. Works very hard on every aspect of his game yeah certainly one of the best players in the world and he's won the majority of tournaments on our calendar I think he's been the world nine ball champion world masters champion and I think he's actually been the MVP for Europe I think he's won it four or five times. Yes, the Moscone Cup is very much on his radar. He would love to get back in the team and be on a, a winning side in 2021.
Used all the pocket there on the seven ball. Landed the wrong side of the eight, but shouldn't cause any problems. Going to spin this off three rails. This is how you like them. And so there's no doubt about this, Neil Swine is definitely superior in terms of these tactical battles. He's winning them, and as a result, he's winning racks. He's won five. Jason Shaw has won four. When a match lives up to expectations, it's always a good thing. Right from the start of the day, we were looking at this one and thinking, an absolute blockbuster, and that's how it's turning out. 5-4 to Neil Spine at the moment, and that after he trailed 3-0, having not got a single shot in those first three racks. Jason Shaw breaking and running in all three. So it's just a three-match session, this. Already successful. Well, it's mixed fortunes for Austria. Max Lechner, he got the W. Alvin Auschen did not. Rack number 10. Our current score is 5-4 to four in favour of Mr. Fine. Mr. Fine to break. Niels has uh, gone back to the other side of the table. Let's see what he changes up there. And once again, no clear shot on the two. It's amazing that you can break one day and land on the lowest numbered ball every single rack and then the next day 
you get no shot. And sometimes really bad breaks give you an easy out too. So we're looking at a nice safety shot between the uh, four and the five ball. Or are we looking at that free bank shot with position? No, he's opted for the safety shot, which I think is a good decision. But I think he has left Jason a window of opportunity. Yeah, he's not played that well. And if Jason can get in behind the two ball and kick it, he'll send the cue ball off the bottom rail into the bottom of the two and in behind the eight. Or he could hit it full. Sending the two up to the top of the table Stand. and the cue ball in behind Stand the eight, please. the three and the six. And that's perfect. What a shot he's played there. That's a great shot by Jason. Good call, Chris. Yeah, playing that shot, the cue ball's always going to go towards the eight. It's all about the pace of the shot and he's slightly unfortunate that he's left the two next to the top rail. Because Niels can kick this ball in. Yeah, we talked about that please. in the previous game, didn't we, about trying to get the object ball away from the rail to make it a little more difficult to kick at. Yeah, and also if he does kick this from the side rail and hits it full in the face, it'll double kiss and the cue ball will go down the table. Well, he's being very lucky there because he's just smashed that. He didn't know what was going to happen in his kind of hit and hope there and got very fortunate. See the tap of the table from Niels after. That's a sign of saying, I'm sorry, I got very lucky. When on Snooky, you'll see players hold the hand up to say sorry. And it's worked the oracle. Yeah, Neil's fine. Tap the table to say he's sorry, but he wasn't really. He was loving it. It's yeah. just etiquette. Yeah, it's funny when people say sorry because they don't actually mean it. What a big visit this is. Can fly and get on the hill. It should be plain sailing from here. Just got to get the right angle on the six ball from the five. Come up a little bit short there for this nine ball into the corner, not quite where he wanted. A little tester here. Yeah, it's a lot tougher than it should have been. He did clear up. He laid the snooker 
in escaping one, luckily, and made the most of his good fortune. Neil Sion finds himself on the hill. He was 3-0 down, but he's won six of the last seven racks. Can Jason Shaw somehow turn this around and pull it out of the fire? Well, if he does, it will mean we are going the distance right now. Fion is definitely the man to beat. Yes, thank you very much. The man to beat and on the hill. Skyler Woodward, been a really intense game and, and very tactical, would you say? Uh, yeah, for sure, you know, both playing great, but, uh, you know, there's been a lot of safeties too, good safety battles and stuff. It's It's been a good match. We didn't expect this, did we, after Jason Shaw's fantastic start, so that's credit to Niels. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, that's a, a great comeback, especially when Jason comes out, runs the first three, and, and Niels fires back. You know, just to come back, is uh, that's good. What's it like to, obviously, win a breaks? What's it like to be there? Is it just so frustrating you want to get back on that table? Yeah, winter breaks, you know, you're just you're just hoping you get back to the table because uh, uh, you just really need one chance to take control. Yeah, one chance. One more rack needed for Niels to make it through to the quarterfinal. Yes, Michael, and if he does go through, he will provide the opposition there for Albania's Eklund catching. Still, though, Our unfinished business. Don't write off Jason Fine. Shaw just yet. Fine. Break on the hill. Good bit there from Niels, but not the easiest of shots on the one. This is a very thin cut. Made two balls on the break. It's not just about the cut, it's also position on the two. He's going to have to come twice across with the cue ball, which makes the cut a lot more difficult. Exasperated, the the chalk hits the the table. He knows the potential significance of that. It wasn't easy, as Chris said. But Jason Shaw now has renewed hope. Yeah, and the problem there, Phil, was that when you're in that situation, you've got to make sure you make that one ball because you're going to have a shot at the two, no matter what, or a safety. That was a poor effort from Niels there. And this is what Jason Shaw needed. And the irony of this, when it was 3-0, Shaw's first mistake was undercutting a one ball. He's just losing a little bit of control over the cue ball. He's landing the wrong side of the the object ball. So now he's going to have to go up the table with the eight ball. Played that nicely. What a turnaround. This is the come. Jason Shaw cleaning up that rack to make it 6-5 to Niels with Jason breaking. And it just goes to show that no matter the lead you've got, one mistake can pivot the whole thing around. And this was that mistake. OK, the cue ball was glued to that side cushion. It was very thin indeed. But as Chris Melling said, it was all about the pot. Just concentrate solely on that. Jason Shaw now breaking to take it to 6-6 to Hill Hill. And you know, these lot know it. We all know it. 
Okay, it's a last 16 contest. But whoever emerges from this, come tomorrow night, could be clasping some silverware. It's nice to see a crowd back in the arena after this long break. Rank number 12, our current score is 65 in favour of Mr. Fine. Mr. Shaw, to break. Well, I gave that a bit more there. And what a break. Absolutely perfect on the one ball. Not one ball tied up. I noticed his whole mannerism changed at the end of that rack after stealing that from Niels. That sort of breath of fresh air is back in him and uh, his eyes are wider at the moment. He sees this opportunity come back. Yeah, I think he's just annoyed with uh, some of the shots what he's played. He's played a couple of loose ones, which isn't like Jason. And there's another one. Needed to be further over with the cue ball. So his automatic position is coming down the table for the four. Now he's going to have to play this with a lot of top spin, which is why he's taking the one ball out of the pocket, because we saw a ball jump out of that opposite corner pocket earlier in one of the matches. Tension. Tension, please. Again, he's lost that cue ball. Not a difficult shot to make, but the pressure's on. It's going all the way, Phil. It's I was just being non-committal until the six went in. Now I absolutely agree. Just what you want from two of the powerhouses in the game. Whatever the outcome, these two are already confirmed as masters of pool but they're desperate to progress. And now it is 6-6, six, six, all on one final rack shootout. But the man sitting down there has got cause for concern because its opponent, Jason Shaw, gets to break in the all-important 13th rack. In terms of safety, Fiennes has been the most effective. In terms of the break, no dispute. Jason Shaw has won that battle conclusively. These are the match stats so far. Shaw's top success rate 95%. Fiennes 98 from distance. Again, absolutely top notch. Safety errors though. Four from Shaw and that's why he was trailing. 4-3 and should I say, he was trailing 5-4. So this is the second match that's gone hill-hill. The first one was in the opening round. Dennis Graber overcame Roberto Gomez 7-6, but this is an infinitely higher quality encounter than that one. Well, it just shows you how tough a, an opponent Niels is. He hasn't 13, broken ran one match. At six games apiece. One rack, should I say, Shaw, and he's still six on all. The hill. Oh, and the wing ball's not gone in. Wing ball, John, hasn't lived up to his name there. Wow. That has rarely happened this week, and 
Niels probably cannot believe he's back at the table. It certainly thought about going in, that two ball. It's amazing when you get to Hill Hill. Amazing how often you get a dry break when the table's been playing friendly in terms of the break. Just when you don't need it. Yeah, Niels does have a shot at the one. It's a little bit awkward queuing. His hand's a lot more closer than it normally is to the object ball. Cue ball's close. Oh, and he's took a flick off the five. Very, very fortunate there. Niels is looking to make this two ball and then he's got to play a combination three eight. Yeah, that's such a big shot, isn't it? Hill hill. Everything on the line. Well for me he's caught that a little bit too thick there, Alison. Could have done with the cue ball being a lot closer to the three. This isn't a gimme. But not only the, the pot, Attention, he's got please. to play position on the ball he's hitting. I think there's a little bit more meat on the bone in this rack, Alison. This is the shot right here. That was a brilliant shot. We simply couldn't have played that much better. That was an excellent shot there from Niels. Especially under the circumstances. Three ball was always going to hold its spot there once it hit the eight ball. Always oh, bridging over, it's not easy. Nice shot, nicely played. Isn't this tense? Shame in a match like this, there's got to be a loser, but that's the, the way the cookie crumbles. One of them will be intensely disappointed. Yeah, and the seven ball passes the nine, so he's not got a great deal to do to get onto the seven. This is Jason's only hope. The five to the six. Oh, wow. He's missed that by a country mile. He missed that by a long, long way. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is simply pressure. You don't often see that, do you? But that just shows you. It doesn't matter how many times you've made that ball, you're a world champion, Attention, there's always going to be pressure. He called that so full. I'm astounded. If you remember, Phil, he caught the one ball full as well when he was playing that with a lot of side and, and pace. And this isn't the easiest shot for Jason. Oh, my word. Look at that. Can you believe that? Yeah, and he's caught it thick, and on any other given table, any other day, that was in. I'm sure that uh, Neil's wife, Katerina, and his children, his two little girls, Lena and Cena, are watching, and 
I wonder how nervous they feel. Very. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of pressure out there, and he's faced with another shot like he just missed. The only difference here is he doesn't have to hit this with any pace. Wow, great shot. What an end to this match. The final chapter of what's been an intriguing story was the five ball. They both missed it, but the last mistake was a mistake made by Jason Shaw and Neil Spyan twice a winner of this Daffabet World Pool Masters already is still going for the hat-trick.